Good evening and welcome back to another episode of The Longing, where today we are going to be continuing to read The Iliad by Homer, and we are definitely making some good progress and we are nearly at the end of it. So let's continue. Take this and pour to Jove that's safe from harms, his grace restore thee to our roof and arms. Since victor of thy fears and slighting mine, heaven all thy soul inspires this bold design. Pray to that God who high on Ida's brow surveys thy desolated realms below, his winged messenger to send from high, and lead thy way with heavenly augury. Augury. Let the strong sovereign of the plumy race tower on the right of yon ethereal space. That sign beheld and strengthened from above, boldly pursue the journey marked by Jove. But if the god his augury denies, suppress thy impulse nor reject advice. Tis just, said Priam, to the sire above, to raise our hands for who so good as Jove. He spoke and bade the attendant handmaid bring the purest water of the living spring. Her ready hands the ewer and basin held, then took the golden cup his queen had filled. On the mid-pavement pours the rosy wine, uplifts his eyes and calls the power divine. O first and greatest heaven's imperial lord, on lofty Ida's holy hill adored. To stern Achilles now direct my ways, and teach him mercy when a father prays. If such thy will dispatch from yonder sky, thy sacred bird celestial augury. Let the strong sovereign of the plumy race tower on the right of yon ethereal space. I'm sure we just read this. So shall thy suppliant, suppliant strengthened from above, fearless pursue the journey marked by Jove. Jove heard his prayer and from the throne on high dispatched his bird, celestial augury. The swift-winged chaser of the feathered game and known to gods by Perknos's lofty name. Wide as appears some palace gate displayed, so broad his pinions stretch their ample sh shade. As stooping Dexter with resounding wings, the imperial bird descends in airy rings. A dawn of joy in every face appears, the morning matron dries her timorous tears. Swift on his car the impatient monarch sprung, the brazen portal in his passage rung. The mules proceeding draw the loaded wain, charged with the gifts, Idaeus holds the rein. The king himself his gentle steeds controls, and through surrounding friends the chariot rolls. On his slow wheels the following people wait, mourn at each step and give him up to fate. With hands uplifted eye him as he passed, and gaze upon him as they gazed their last. Now forward fares the father on his way, through the lone fields and back to Ilion they. Great Jove beheld him as he crossed the plain, and felt the woes of miserable man. Wait. I'm not sure. Oh, right, yeah. Then thus to Hermes, thou whose constant cares still succor mortals and attend their prayers. Behold an object to thy charge consigned, if ever pity touch thee for mankind. Go guard the sire, the observing foe prevent, and safe conduct him to Achilles' tent. The god obeys his golden pinions blind, binds, 294, and mounts incumbent on the wings of winds. That high through fields of air his flight sustain, o'er the wide earth and o'er the boundless main. Then grasps the wand that causes sleep to fly, or in soft slumbers seals the wakeful eye. Thus armed, swift Hermes steers his airy way, and stoops on Hellespont's resounding sea. 
a beauteous youth majestic and divine. He seemed fair offspring of some princely line. Now twilight veiled the glaring face of day, and clad the dusky fields in sober grey. What time the herald and the hoary king, their chariots stopping at the silver spring, that circling Illus' ancient marble flows, allowed their mules and steeds a short repose. Through the dim shade the herald first espies, a man's approach and thus to Priam cries. I mark some foe's advance, O king, beware. This hard adventure claims thy utmost care. For much I fear destruction hovers nigh. Our state asks counsel, is it best to fly? Or old and helpless at his feet to fall, Two wretched suppliants and for mercy call. The afflicted monarch shivered with despair, Pale grew his face and upright stood his hair. Sunk was his heart, his colour went and came, A sudden trembling shook his aged frame. When Hermes' greeting touched his royal hand, <laughs> And gentle thus accosts with kind demand, Say whither, father, when each mortal sight is sealed in sleep thou wanderest through the night. Why roam thy mules and steeds the plains along, through Grecian foes so numerous and so strong? What couldst thou hope should these thy treasures view, these who, endless, he, these who with endless hate thy race pursue? For what defence, alas, couldst thou provide? Thyself not young, a weak old man thy guide. Yet suffer not thy soul to sink with dread, From me no harm shall touch thy reverend head. From Greece I'll guard thee too, for in those lines The living image of my father shines. Thy words that speak benevolence of mind Are true, my son, the godlike sire rejoined. Great are my hazards, but the gods survey, my steps and send thee, guardian of my way. Hail and be blessed for scarce of mortal kind, appear thy form, thy feature, and thy mind. Nor true are all thy words, nor erring wide, the sacred messenger of heaven replied. But say, conveyest thou, though the lonely plains, what yet most precious of thy store remains? To lodge in safety with some friendly hand, Prepared perchance to leave thy native land. Or fliest thou now what hopes can Troy retain, Thy matchless son her guard and glory slain. The king alarmed, say what and whence thou art, Who search the sorrows of a parent's heart, And know so well how godlike Hector died. Thus Priam spoke, and Hermes thus replied. You tempt me, father, and with pity touch, On this sad subject you inquire too much. Oft have these eyes that godlike Hector viewed, In glorious fight with Grecian blood embrued. I saw him when, like Jove his flames he tossed, On thousand ships and withered half a host. I saw but helped not stern Achilles' ire, Forbade assistance and enjoyed the fire. For him I serve of Myrmidonian race, One ship conveyed us from our native place. Polyctor is my sire an honoured name, Old like thyself and not unknown to fame, Of seven his sons by whom the lot was cast, To serve our prince it fell on me the last. To watch this quarter my adventure falls, For with the morn the Greeks attacks your, attack your walls. Sleepless they sit, impatient to engage, And scarce their rulers check their martial rage. If then thou art of stern Pelides' train, The mournful monarch thus rejoined again, Ah, tell me truly where, O oh, where, are laid, My son's dear relics, what befalls him dead. Have dogs dismembered on the naked plains, Or yet unmangled rest his cold remains? 
And with that, we come to the end of the episode. I think we'll probably be another... I don't know... Five? Maybe twenty, so... Maybe four or five episodes or something. I think, to finish this. At which point, we'll have a bit of a break. Um, and then all, all will be fine. But anyway, thank you very much for joining us today. I hope you all have a wonderful morning, evening, afternoon or night. No matter what time of day it is, I hope you all have a wonderful one of it. And as always, we will be back tomorrow for more of The Longing. Goodbye.